Hello and welcome. My name is Fian Stipp. I'm a machine learning research engineer based out of San Francisco. And today we're going to discuss variational autoencoders. So I'm first going to give you three reasons to try to convince you why you should learn them. And secondly, we're going to go through an implementation from scratch in PyTorch. So why learn VAEs? So I'll give you three reasons. The first is it's a fundamental architecture of self-supervised learning. And self-supervised learning is what has led through many of the breakthroughs in artificial intelligence, um, such as large language models. Um, and I, I think for, for the future, self-supervised learning is one of the core paradigms uh, for further progress in artificial intelligence. Uh, secondly, it's, a, it's foundational for advanced generative models. Uh, this includes things like stable diffusion, and thirdly, it's actually biologically relevant um, and has many deep roots uh, with, with biology. So let's, let's go into some of these. So firstly, as a fundamental architecture of self-supervised learning, um, there's something called the manifold hypothesis. Uh, and this hypothesis posits that most naturally occurring uh, high dimensional data set lie on a low dimensional manifold, meaning that high dimensional input streams such as vision um, from from cameras um, actually lie on a low dimensional manifold that if learned uh, could be exploited for prediction um, i.e if you compress and orthogonalize uh, sens sensory data we can learn uh, rich concepts and this is actually what a variational autoencoder aims to do so self-supervisation, if this manifold hypothesis is true, in theory, is sufficient to allow the formation of high-level concepts. Um, so variational autoencoders learn uh, very high-level semantic themes, like you know if somebody's smiling, um, what the length of their hair is, and so on, all in a completely self-supervised way. So these generative models actually imply the existence of, of low-dimensional neural codes. And this is what, what you'll see in a VAE. Um, so secondly, uh, it's a foundation for advanced generative models. So here's the, the stable diffusion architecture. Um, and the VAE is a core uh, component. And um, if you don't understand the, the VAE, it's, it's going to be very difficult uh, to study or implement um, a diffusion model, especially um, you know, in, in any level of, of depth or understanding. Uh, also, uh, VQ, vector quantized VAEs, uh, of course, that's got the name VAE in the, uh, in the name also. So um, there's many advanced generative models that are built on top of this foundation. Um, and world models, uh, going back to the schmidt tuber paper also. So on the biological plausibility, um, there, there are papers, uh, this one from uh, Christopher, uh, Christopher Summerfield and uh, also Demis Tsabis, uh, where they, they demonstrate a strong correspondence between the, the factors learned in the, the latent space by uh, a beta VAE and those coded uh, by the, the IT neurons uh, in a brain. Um, and th this is to me a, a fascinating parallel between you know self-supervised learning, just using a variational autoencoder, um, and also uh, what's what may be happening in, in neural activity in, in a brain. So actually, what is a variational autoencoder? So the the left diagram here is is very important, and this is the description of of what a VAE is trying to model. So we're just given, or we just observe in the, the real world, these uh, data points X. Uh, but what a, a, a VAE um, breaks it down into is that there's some latent variables um, that are causing this X. So this is, in a way, you can think of this as, this is the, the low dimensional manifold that's generating observations X. And we can model this through a combination of um, encoders and decoders. So uh, we've got phi and, and theta um, to, to model this, this model. Um, so the, the original paper came out in, in 2013 and it was called uh, Autoencoding Variational Bayes. And this was really a breakthrough paper. Um, 
and it, it set off uh, a stream of other papers that, that came after it. So in terms of an architecture overview, uh, we'll go more into the mathematics in just a moment, but firstly I want to point out the, the elbow. Um, this is essentially the, uh, the loss uh, or the, the negative of the loss that we're, we're going to be optimizing. Um, so in particular, um, here you can see there's the, the log uh, probability um, of uh, x given z star. Z star is the, the late, a sample from the, the latent space. This is the reconstruction that the, the decoder is trying to generate. So given some latent features, it's, it's trying to use a generative model to, to generate x, which is um, the, the observation. Um, and we can measure and um, maximize this, this probability uh, under parameters theta. And on the left-hand side, you can see the KL divergence. And this is what the, the encoder model is, is, um, is compressing down into. So it uses uh, model Q uh, with parameters phi to go from, um, go from X and encode that into, into Z. And then we can measure the KL divergence. So it's a, a measure of, um, of distance, pseudo distance uh, between a prior P of Z um, and, and Q. And we want to essentially have these things as close as possible while still maintaining a good reconstruction. And so it's a, it's a balance between these. So let, let's walk through the, the math in high, high level. So I'm not going to go too deep into this because we, we want to focus on the implementation and there'll be a further video on the, the math in, uh, in the future. So suppose we have XI that we, we sample from uh, X uh, in an IID way. Um, then by independence, we know the, pro the joint uh, distribution uh, is the, the product. Um, and we'd like to, if we just take a single one of these, we'd like to maximize the probability of x with respect to theta. So we can rewrite the, the log probability of x in terms of integration over z. Um, this is just a completely equivalent definition. And now what we're going to do is essentially multiply by 1. So we multiply the numerator and denominator by uh, q and um, this has not changed anything, but it's going to help us in the next step. So just by the de definition of expectation, this is actually the expectation uh, over distribution Q. And what we're going to do now is apply Jensen's inequality. Um, because log is a concave function, uh, we can move the log inside the, the expectation. Um, so again, this, this is Jensen's inequality applied to expectations. Now, rewriting uh, the definition of expectation in terms of an integral, uh, this is the result. And what we're going to do now is break up uh, the, the numerator P, uh, which is the joint distribution of X and Z, uh, uh, into its definition, which is just um, into the conditional definition, which is probability of X given Z times probability of Z. Um, and what we're going to do now is just apply the log rules. So we know that the, the log of A times B is the same as log of A plus the log of B. So that's how we split this into two integrals. And this negative sign comes from the fact that we've, um, we're exploiting the, the fact that the, the log of A over B is the same as negative log B over A. And so those two steps make this, um, this step here in, in the, the math. Now, okay, now that, that's, the, that's how we actually now got the elbow. So the, the, first is, the first term is just rewriting, again, this in terms of expectations. And the second is the definition of the KL divergence uh, between Q and P. So we know by Monte Carlo estimation that the expectation can be approximated just by sampling and taking an average. Um, so what we're going to do is just take an average of one data point, i.e. we're going to sample one data point Z um, and then represent the elbow as an approximation to that data point sampled and then passed into the model P um, to, to calculate the probability of X uh, or the log probability of X. Uh, and then we still have our KL divergence term from earlier. 
And now finally, we're, we're actually at our uh, loss function or the, the opposite, it's the objective function actually. Um, so we know that the KL divergence between two normal distributions uh, can simply be uh, written like this. So for basically what we've derived now is for a single data point, um, we can compute this value. And this value now, now gives us the objective and this is a differentiable function and we can now optimize our model parameters um, based on this. So this is the architecture we're going to implement. Um, it's a, a encoder which just consists of some convolutional batch norms, etc. Uh, it's very simple and it's, it's just going to uh, do the job for us and the decoder is going to look like this. Okay, so before we start an implementation, I'm going to give an overview of the, the steps. Uh, so we're first going to start with uh, the, the data file um, and I'm going to introduce the, the data set to you. Uh, from there, we're going to go onto the core part of the video, which is the modeling, uh, which is going to include setting up the abstractions, uh, then coding the VAE, the loss function, uh, and then the encoder and the, the decoder to, to be uh, used within that variational autoencoder. Uh, from there, we're going to go to the, the train.py script. This combines the, the data and the model, um, trains the model, uh, outputs checkpoints. Um, the, there's three main steps here. It's training, validation, and uh, generate. And finally, we're going to go onto a script which generates novel samples uh, of images um, from, uh, from the model. So this is going to be new images, not within the, the train data set. So the data set we're going to be using is the Celeb A data set. Uh, this is a data set of 200,000 uh, celebrity uh, images. Um, each of them have actually been tagged with uh, 40 attributes. Uh, however, we're not going to be making use of any of those attributes because we're purely interested in the self-supervised learning case. So we're just going to be uh, reading in the, the images. So let's look at the, the code uh, for loading in that data. And I'm not going to code up uh, this, this data uh, transformation live just because um, the, the focus of this video is more on the, the VAE model and training. Um, but I'll, I'll quickly uh, show you um, just how we're pulling this data in. So actually Torch Vision already have a, uh, a class for initializing the, the Slab A data set and this will automatically download it for you if you, you put this flag on uh, into a, a root folder, which you can specify. So I'm, I'm just dumping this into data. Um, and I've broken this in, up into a couple of different functions. Um, <clears throat> so the, the one thing I wanna highlight here is we have this uh, Celeb A uh, transform. And the reason we need a, a transform is because uh, the Torch dataset uh, we'll actually just load the, the images, uh, but we actually want to map these to, to tensors. Uh, and so all that's happening here is it's uh, going through a resize, a crop, and uh, then transforming that into a, a tensor. Uh, one thing I've actually come across here is um, you want to be very careful with the order of these operations. Um, if you make it a tensor first, then resize afterwards, I found that it, it's actually extremely slow and um, this, this uh, actually becomes a massive bottleneck for training. So uh, the, the resize and then the, the tensor transformation is, is much faster. Okay, so going back to our plan, um, let's now go on to the core part of the video, which is going to be the, the modeling. Okay, so now let's code up the core architecture. Um, so we're going to start with the abstractions, uh, the interfaces between each of the core components, and then from there we'll fill in the implementations. So let's start by importing ABC and we're going to set up the encoder first. Um, we also actually need torch um, because the encoder is uh, and the decoder is gonna be a torch module. And whilst we're here, we can also import um, uh, the NN module. So, uh, yes, so the encoder is uh, an N module and it's also going, this is going to be the uh, base class. And um, we, we're going to make the, the forward method of the NN module, uh, the, the abstraction in the interface here. 
Uh, so the encoder takes in an image. So this is, let's call this X. Uh, this is going to be an image and uh, it's a tensor and we're going to output um, something. So let, let's figure out what we need to output. So the, the encoder of a variation autoencoder uh, takes in an image or some, some uh, inputs and transform this into the, the parameters of a, a normal distribution. Uh, and so we need to set that up as the output interface. Uh, so let's use a, a named tuple for this. Um, so we're going to import a named tuple and let's define that now. Um, and this is going to be, let's call this the encode output. And the, the parameters of a normal distribution is uh, mu for the mean. And we're going to represent the, the variance term as the, the log variance and we'll see why later. Okay, so now we can so say that the encoder takes in X and outputs this encoder out output, which is the, the mu and the, the log variance term uh, for a normal distribution. Uh, let's now set up the uh, base decoder. And this is also going to be a, an end dot module and we're going to set up the uh, base class uh, and the interface. So. Let's also code up the, the forward. Okay, so that so let's think about what does the decoder do? So the encoder takes in the, the input image, let's say, and maps that to the, the mu and log variance. Um, we then, using that normal distribution created by the encoder, uh, we can sample a latent variable from that. And from that latent variable, we pass that into the decoder, which then outputs the image reconstruction. So let's term the, the latent variable Z and uh, set up the interface here. So we're just going to output the, the image reconstruction, which is another tensor. Okay, so this is the abstraction. Um, now let's think about how this abstraction would be used in a, a VAE. So we can actually start coding up the VAE class already. Uh, so the VAE, VAE is not going to be an abstraction. We can just uh, use the encode and the decode abstractions in this definition. So when we initialize this, we want to pass it an encoder and a decoder. Okay, so let's actually set these. Uh, with a, a torch module, you need to call uh, super init. Um, to, to initialize uh, before setting up any of the others. Okay, so we have our encoder and our decoder. Uh, now let's go on to the forward method. So a VAE um, just also takes an, an image and uh, let's, let's specify the output type later. Okay, so what do we do first? So the first thing uh, we do is we're going to take this image and pass it directly to the encoder. Uh, so we know the encoder outputs mu and log var. So let's uh, ca just call the, the encoder on that output. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to sample uh, a latent variable. So let's set up that method later. So we're going to call this uh, sample z from mean and log var. And so we pass in the mean log var. Uh, and yeah, let's let's set that up now. Um, and let me just get that syntax right. Okay. So mu is, you know, it's a tensor, so is the, the log variance. And we're going to return uh, the, the latent as as a tensor also. <clears throat> so we're going to do something called the reparameterization trick, um, where instead of initializing a normal distribution from uh, from mu and uh, the, the, the variance term and then sampling from that, uh, we're going to take out that randomness component um, and uh, use that separately. Uh, the, the reason being is uh, PyTorch is an auto diff library and um, the problem is if we construct a normal distribution sample from it, 
the the normal distribution contains randomness, and so we're going to be back propagating through through a random node uh, in the in the uh, auto diff graph. So we're actually going to uh, do an equivalent operation, um, which is going to uh, take the random component outside of it, and so we're going to have the the back prop directly through the the non-random nodes, which is mu and log var. Uh, and so th this is actually a very simple thing to do in practice. Um, what we need to do is just sample something random and then multiply it um, and combine it with the, the mu and log variance terms. Uh, and this sets up an, a, an equivalent, oper equivalent operation. Um, so what we can do is just uh, do a, a, a random normal sample and the, the size uh, we want to be the same as, as mu. Uh, so it's mu dot shape, and uh, we also need to make sure that we, we put this on the right device. Okay, now that we've got the random component, uh, it's it's quite simple. We just need to, um, uh, well, let's let's first do z. So we're going to take take mu, and we need to add it um, to uh, the the log variance. Uh, uh, term that, that's been scaled. So to set that up, um, first we take the log variance and we just transform it into the variance uh, by taking the exponentiation. And uh, now that we have that, we need to take the square root uh, of, of this. And now we can multiply it by um, the epsilon term. And now we can just return this. And yeah, th this is called the, the reparameterization trick. Okay, so now we've, we've sampled Z. Next thing to do is just to pass this uh, through the, the decoder. Um, so let's call the, the reconstruction uh, X hat. And we pass Z through there. Um, and now we've, we've got our uh, prediction. So we could actually return this right away. Um, however, we also want to calculate some some loss terms here as well. Um, so there's there's two components uh, going back to the elbow. There's uh, the KL divergence and the the reconstruction. Uh, so the the reconstruction loss is is quite simple. Um, let's just import the the right library for this. Um, so I think this is in the yep. Um, well, let's do. We're going to take the functional uh, library and we're going to import it as f. And now we can actually compute the reconstruction loss. Uh, so I've imported um, the the functional module from from Torch, and we can use the the MSE loss uh, for the the mean squared error between the prediction and the target. So. Uh, x hat is the prediction and x is the target and let's set the reduction to be mean um, so we, we want to take the, the average and um, so for the the overall loss uh, we also need to uh, going back to the elbow uh, we need the, the kl penalty so let's define that now um, before i do that uh, the the thing we uh, we'll, we'll find out when training is um, that there's something that, that comes up in VAE is called the posterior collapse. Um, and this is where <clears throat> the, the model essentially ignores um, uh, or the, the, pri the, the priors that the encoder maps to are not informative for the decoder. And so the decoder ends up just ignoring them. Um, and it's called posterior collapse uh, because the, the posterior from the encoder is very similar to the uh, the prior and so um, we can we can uh, mitigate that in a couple of ways and we'll, we'll talk about some of those later but uh, a very simple way is just to um, to, to lower the weight on the KL term uh, because it's the, the KL term that's that's dominating in, in this case um, so let's call this the the beta coefficient. Uh, and there's a, a paper called uh, Beta VAE um, that, that goes into more depth on, on this topic. Um, and let's see what I remember setting this to. Okay, 
So I need to set this to uh, this value. Um, you can you know play around with this value. Typically, the the higher the beta, um, the the worse the the reconstruction. Um, but if you put beta too small, uh, the model ends up overfitting. And actually, if you set beta to zero, you end up just getting an autoencoder. Um, and so. Uh, yeah, we're going to, to set beta to, to this value, which ends up working well in practice for, for this data set. Um, and now we also need to code up the, the KL term. Um, so the KL term is simply this, and, and this is just now an implement, implementation from uh, the, the elbow. Um, so it's uh, 1 plus the, the log variance, and then it's... Uh, we need to, it's uh, the, the mu with the, the dot product with itself, so we can just do the squared value of, of mu, that, that's an equivalent operation. Uh, subtract the variance, uh, so we need to take the log variance and uh, just make it the variance um, by taking the exponential. And uh, th so this, this dimension, um, we need to do over the, the latent dimension, which is dimension one. And, but in the end, we actually want uh, just a, a scalar value from this. Uh, so we're going to take the mean over, over all of this and that gets us the, the KL term. Okay, so let's return the, the loss, but also the, the reconstruction since the, the reconstruction is gonna be useful for other things. And, you know, whilst we're in this function, um, let's uh, set up, um, so some other some other methods that, that are going to be helpful later. So one is uh, generating a value from from z. Uh, this is just where we we take in uh, z and we we sample from it. Um, so z is a tensor, and this is a very simple method, but it, it's going to um, be a nice wrapper for for later when we're going on to do generation. Um, so I think, I think this is all, all we need now. Um, one thing to, to note is actually this, uh, the sample mean from log variance isn't using the self. And so we can actually just make this uh, a static method. Uh, it could also be a, a function, but we'll, we'll make it a static method for now. And uh, yeah, that, that's all we need for the, the for the variational uh, autoencoder. Um, the implementation now is going to focus on firstly the encoder and then the decoder. So let's go back to our plan. Uh, so we've set up the abstractions, we've set up the VAE, um, and now we'll, we'll actually set up some configuration first before doing the, the encoder and decoder. And what this configuration is going to be useful for is um, initializing different variants of the, the VAE. And we're going to use some, some elegant uh, libraries to, to make this configuration easy. Um, so let's first set up the, the base uh, configuration. And we're going to make use of uh, Pydantic for data validation and uh, passing in JSONs and um, YAML files, that sort of thing. Uh, so we're going to use a base model. This is also, since it's the, the base config, uh, we can make this an abstract base class. So all variational autoencoders uh, should have a, a latent dimension in common. Um, we're also going to um, specify the activation function. And uh, let's set this just to, to ReLU for, as, as default. And um, we can also set a, a dropout rate. And Pydantic has some nice um, helpers here to, to set things like a default and a less than or equal to, so it should be less than one, and it should be greater than zero. And um, that's that sets up the, the base config. So we're, we're going to be working with a convolutional neural network um, in this case, because we're, we're taking an image data. Um, so we can just go ahead and implement uh, the, the CN, CNN uh, VAE config. So we're going to inherit from the, the VAE uh, config and we're going to specify the, the types we need. 
uh, all the attributes we need. Um, so the first thing is we need, and this will become clear in a minute why I'm specifying this, this type field. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a CNN type. Uh, we want an input shape, and this is a tuple, which we also need to import. Uh, and it's a tuple of ints, and I'm just going to leave the, the number of dimensions free. Uh, it, it, in our case, it's going to be a 3 times uh, 64 times 64 image. Um, we're going to specify the, the channels uh, for the, the CNN. Uh, we also need the, the kernel sizes, which is also going to be a list. And finally, the strides, which is also a list of ints. Now, one nice thing that we'd like to be able to do is just directly pass it a YAML file and um, then it read in this config. So something like this, we want to automatically then populate into, into this class. So we're going to specify this, this class method here on, on the base class. And this is going to take this from path and we can just give it a path to a config like the one I just showed, and it's going to return one of these uh, subclasses. Um, so now we're going to use a little trick to, to do that. So I'm going to specify this, um, this private uh, class within this, this method, which is simply just going to be used for the, the passing and the, the reading. So it's got one field config, and this is also using um, a, a dynamic way to construct this union. So um, we're going to take all of the, the subclasses and um, we're going to then use a discriminator on the field type to, to find the subclass we want. So uh, it's going to read and type from this, this YAML and then map it to this, this class. Uh, and um, so it's, it's just a, a trick to do that. Uh, so it's a field with a discriminator on this type field. And uh, of course, MyPy doesn't like this, so we're going to put a, a type ignore. Okay, so now it's, it's simple because we can just do this. We can do uh, we can use this pydantic yaml library and we can directly just say pass yaml file as and then we give it this config pass a cla uh, class and the path and then we return the, the config. Okay, so going back to our implementation, um, we can now see that we've done the first three three steps of the, the modeling, uh, and now we're going to get into the, the core encoder and decoder. Um, so let okay, so the encoder is consisting of uh, convolutional layers. Um, well, I don't know why it's skipping. Convolutional layers, uh, followed by batch norms and, and values, and it's just a, a repetition of these things uh, with, with dropouts as well. Um, and then once we get to the, the final convolutional layer, we're going to use uh, two linear projections, one for, for mu and one for the log variance uh, to get the, um, the parameters for the normal distribution. Okay. So let's, let's start the implementation of those now. Okay, so we already have the, uh, the abstraction set up for the encoder. So now we just need to fill in this implementation. So this is going to be a CNN encoder. Uh, it's going to inherit from this encoder class, and now we can set up the, the init. Uh, it's already going to be a torch module um, because of the, the parent class. Uh, so firstly, let's read in this, uh, this config, and we can, we can now uh, firstly just call super to, to make sure that the torch module is initialized. And now we can set up the, the rest of the, the class. Um, so firstly, uh, we're going to have multiple layers that we want to uh, generate from the config file. Um, 
and those layers are going to be uh, sequential, which we're going to take in the input uh, tensor x and pass it sequentially through those layers. So let's um, uh, break down this into, into a couple of steps. So we want to firstly create the layers and we can do this from the config. So I'm going to set up this, uh, this method here and it's going to return uh, actually it's just a sequence uh, of NN modules. And now let's uh, grab this, this config and uh, start creating the, the layers out of it. So um, we have RGB images. Um, and so we firstly need to know what's uh, the, the number of the, the channel. So it's uh, RGB, so there's going to be three, but we're gonna read this in uh, from, from the config. Uh, and that comes, of course, from the input shape. Okay, so let's start building up these, these layers now. So uh, we're going to iterate over the, the config uh, parameters that we have. So we're going to first get the, the number of out channels, the, the kernel size and the stride. Um, and we're going to grab these from the, the config. Um, so we first have channels kernel sizes, and we're gonna zip these things um, together. So let's use the, the just the Python zip to do that. Um, zip can be a little dangerous, so I believe in here somewhere there is, yeah, this strict uh, parameter, which is gonna make sure that uh, everything's the, the same length. Uh, otherwise, it will truncate um, strides, let's say, if strides is uh, less than the length of the others. Okay. So we now have um, the, all of the variables we need to start creating layers. Um, so let's append these now. Um, so as the, the architecture we looked at earlier, um, it start, starts first with the conv2d layer. Uh, so the in channels uh, has been given to us and we also have the, the number of out channels, uh, kernel size, stride, and we can just set these up and we're going to also just do some, some padding and this is, this is hard coded. Um, okay, next is the batch norm. Uh, this is going to help prevent uh, things like uh, vanishing gradients. Uh, it's also just going to make the, the training more stable. Uh, next we need our activation function and here we're just going to use um, the, the config variable directly. Um, so from the NN module, we're going to initialize a class that's got the same name as the activation function from the config. Uh, so we can grab the activation function, and then this is now going to be a class that we're grabbing from NN, and then we initialize it. And finally, we can now just put a, a dropout layer. Um, the config also specifies uh, the, the dropout rate, and so we can, we can code this. Um, now the, the in channels is going to become the, the out channels now. So we need to make sure that we uh, set that. And this is going to be the, the core CNN backbone, um, or the, the layers for the CNN backbone. Um, so we've got those layers now and we can, uh, now create an uh, dots sequential out of these. Um, there's then uh, some other things we need to do. So we need to set up the, the mu projection, which is going to map from the last layer of these encodings uh, into the, the mu. Uh, so let's call this the, the mu projection. And now we run into a little issue where we need to figure out what is the input dimensions. Uh, and this is actually going to be uh, variable based on our configuration. So we we need to uh, we need a little helper function here. Uh, so we're going to call this. That's the output from these these encodings, and let's figure out how to do that here. So 
in order to, to do this and the, the shape uh, coming from this, uh, well, we're actually just going to, to set it uh, and then it's going to be accessible. So just an easy way to, to figure this out is just to create a, a, a dummy input and pass it through those convolutional layers that we just made. So let's do that. So we're going to just make some dummy input, batch size of one, um, and the, the shape is given to us by the, the config. And so now we have dummy output. Um, from those layers we just made, we can just pass this dummy, dummy input, and now we can set the output dims. And I think that's, this is working, okay. Um, all right. So this now gives us the, the output dimensions, which we can use uh, as input to the, the mu projection. So we're going to take those output dims, and of course we want to be able to um, map this to the, the latent um, dimensions. Uh, and the, the log variance um, is going to be very similar. And that now sets up everything we, we need for the, the encoder. Um, so we can now go on to the decoder. Uh, oh, the, the main function, of course, we need to set up forward. Let's do it up here. So this comes, this definition comes from the base class. So first thing we do is we pass X through the layers um, and this will then give us uh, another output. Uh, we need to make sure that um, X is now flattened um, and this, this we need to, to flatten uh, with start dim equal to one. And now we need to do the projections. So mu is going to be uh, passing this x through the mu projection, and log variance is going through the log variance projection. And we need this output to be of type encode output, and we can pass this through this named tuple. And now we've also satisfied the, the interface. All right, next let's go into the decoder. Okay, so the, the decode is similar in a lot of ways. Uh, maybe let's flash up this um, architecture again. Um, so very similar, it's it's just kind of a, a reverse of the, the input. Um, so let's let's create that now. So again, we've got the abstraction set up, so we just need to fill in this, uh, this base class or this um, implementation of the base class. Uh, so we're gonna grab that and now again we're going to read in the, the config we need to make sure that we we call um uh, yes we need to call super to set up the torch module and we can set the the config now looking at the encoder it's, it's going to follow a very similar pattern um, so let's let's first um, create the input projection, which is going to take from from the uh, from the sampled latent, uh, and it's going to then map those uh, to the the CNN input. So this is a linear projection um, from the latent dimensions. And it's going to be to the, the 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 last channel size of the encoder, which is going to be the first channel size of the decoder. So, um, so we basically we're reversing the the config here. Uh, okay. Similarly, let's set up um, a, a create layers method. And uh, this is going to return also a list of NN modules. And we're going to follow a similar pattern, just in reverse. Uh, it's a little more complex because we, we need to reverse things, but um, it's, it's pretty simple. So let's initialize the, the empty list. Now, this 
So the input channels is going to be the last of the, the channels from the config uh, because of this reversion. And now we're going to do this, this loop again. So we're going to go to channels, uh, the, the kernel size and the stride, and we're going to zip through these again. Uh, so the channels. Okay, but now this time we need to reverse it. So we're going to do this and we're only going to go up to the the, la the, the second last. Um, so we're going to uh, start at minus two and then, and then go onwards. Okay. And let's also do the, the strict true to make sure it throws an error if, if there's inconsistent lengths. And let's fix this typo. All right. Now from there, we can set up the, the convolution layers. And uh, since we're doing the, the reverse, uh, we're going to use the, the conv uh, transpose class instead. And 2D. Um, so let's start looping through these. Um, out channels. And again, we're going to just hard code the, the padding here. Okay, and we're gonna follow a similar uh, pattern. So we're going to then go on to do batch norm and the, the batch norm is gonna be over the output channels. Now we need our activation function. So let's do the same thing uh, where we get from the, the NN uh, module the activation function and initialize that as a class. Um, and then, yeah, then finally we, we have the dropout as well. Uh, dropout rates. Okay, so this now loops over, uh, and of course, oh yeah, we need to remember to set the input channels. Okay, so, um, there is th this is going all the way to the 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 last uh, layer, but it, it's it's not including the last one. We need to do that that one separately. Um, this is just going to make it easier to manage. Um, so so the the input channels is um, up until zero. Um, and let's make sure I get this, this correct. So then we're going from that last channel back to the input uh, size, um, which is this input shape zero. And uh, now we just need to fill in the, the kernel size, which is also in the config, the stride, output padding. Okay. Now, finally, uh, let's just pass this. Um, we need to make sure everything is scaled between uh, zero and one. Um, so, you know, images, if they're RGB, um, they have three channels. Um, and each of the, the, the values in each of those, those channels in each pixel is between zero and 255. Um, and, but we're going to normalize that to be between zero and one. Uh, and so to, to guarantee that, um, we can add a, a sigmoid uh, layer to this. Uh, dot sigmoid. Now everything uh, will be always between zero and one. Okay, so now we've created the, the layers. Uh, next thing to do is uh, also pass them through this nn.sequential. And we can set this as a class attribute. Uh, finally, just to make sure that we're getting to the, the right size um, of, of the pixel values, uh, we can just set up a, a decoder transform. Um, 
And this actually is going to, we need to import uh, something from Torch Vision. Okay. And we're going to compose together a couple of uh, operations or, or transformations. Uh, the first is uh, we're going to do um, we're going to do a resize, uh, I don't need the self since we have the config passed directly. Um, so the, the number of pixels is on this dimension. And this, this is similar to the, the transform we're doing um, when we're taking in the pill images and uh, just making sure that we, we get the right image out. Okay, now we can just um, actually code up the, the forward method since uh, we now have all of the layers. And I'll just let VS Code pull in that definition from the base class. Okay, so the, the decode is also simple. So we, we take in this um, uh, input projection first, and I'm just going to call the output X. Um, we need to make sure that we uh, get the, the right shape of, of this tensor. Um, so we need to call this view to, to make sure the, the shape is correct. And from there, we can now start passing this through the layers. And we're going to use this uh, decoder transform finally. Okay, great. So now we have the encoder and the decoder. Uh, let's go back to our plan. So we've actually got everything set up now. Uh, we can just start training. Um, well, first to write the training script, but then from there we can start training. Okay, so before we get on to the, the training part of the, the script, uh, we're going to just double check that everything's working. Um, and so let's just initialize this VA to make sure that it, it's been configured correctly. Um, so um, firstly, the, uh, let's forget the equals. Okay. Um, firstly, let's get the, the config. Uh, so we've got this, this base config class that we set up earlier and we can read in directly from a path. So uh, we're going to give it this uh, CNN uh, YAML here. Uh, I'm going to just grab the, the relative path and this should initialize the, the config. Um, and it, it, it should be using the, the type to map it to the right field. So let's let's double check that this is still working. Um, yeah, so it, it seems to, to read in the, the config uh, just fine. Uh, oh, actually, no, it doesn't. I see here the activation. This has the wrong field name, I believe. Let's make sure. Okay, okay, so now it's reading in the, the leaky ReLU. Okay, um, now we've got the config. Uh, I've also implemented this small from config uh, class method on the, the VAE, um, which just checks uh, and, and maps the, the config type to the right architecture. Uh, this could be set up in a, in a uh, more scalable way uh, using something like a, a decorate on the, the class or with some class uh, config registry, but uh, for this application, this is uh, gonna suffice. Uh, now let's let's call on this method uh, and just pass in the, the config and double check that the architecture that we get out uh, aligns with uh, what we think. Um, okay, so looks like the leaky ReLU um, needs a lowercase e. And the, the reason this is throwing an error, so we can see it's on line 80, if we navigate there, uh, it's, it's pulling the config string activation function uh, value and directly calling nn dot whatever that string is uh, to, to initialize. Uh, so this needs to align exactly with uh, whatever the, the class name is in the NN module of PyTorch. Uh, so let's check that now. 
Okay, yeah, we can see that we, we get the architecture back um, and uh, we can see our, our convolutional layers here and our, our uh, decoder convol convolutional transpose layers there. So this, this seems to be good and we can now go ahead and implement the, the training script. All right, so we've, we've done all of this. We can now just go and set up training. So let's uh, set up uh, a method uh, for us to, to run this from. And uh, once we execute this module, uh, if name equals main, we will run the script. Um, so let's, let's set up some uh, constants initially. So um, let's, let's just say we're gonna train for 30 epochs uh, and we can set a batch size uh, 64 is, is fine. And uh, we're going to want to log things every couple of steps and we'll set that to every uh, 10 uh, batches of 64. Okay, so let's start importing some of the, the modules that we set up earlier. So we're going to import the, the data and we're also going to import our model. So um, similarly, we can actually just copy this initialization code here from the modeling.py. Um, need to make sure we have the right uh, module prefix on there. Um, let's also import some uh, utilities from Torch. Uh, so let's import Torch and set up the device. Uh, we can do this before setting those things up. And um, we'll, we'll use a, a GPU if, if we have one, else uh, CPU. Um, uh, I think this is, yeah, CUDA is available. Okay, and uh, we can then just uh, move the, the VAE uh, onto the device. Okay, um, let's now get the, the data as the next part. So um, we can get all of the, the three data sets just with this. So we're gonna have the, the train, uh, the validation, and the, the test data. Uh, we'll need a, a torch data loader to uh, create the, the batches out of these. So let's, um, uh, from torch.utils, let's import the, the torch uh, data util, and we're going to set up the, the data loader. Uh, wait, sorry, I need to import data as torch data. Uh, this is the data loader. This, this, uh, you, you pass in a data set to this, and then it, um, it, it, you can also pass in some other things like a data collator and so on. And this allows you to just iterate over it and get batches. Um, so the, the training data, we, we definitely want to shuffle. Um, the validation and the test, it doesn't really matter if we, we shuffle those or not. So, oops, let's now set set those up as well. And we can remove this flag. We don't really care if, if those are shuffled or not. Uh, so yeah, let's get, grab the validation and the test sets. Okay, so now we've got the, the data. Um, Let's set up uh, next uh, the, the optimizer. So we can use um, any any optimizer really. Uh, Adam Adam W. These all fine. Um, so we need to first uh, we've called a VA. Uh, we need to pass the parameters uh, so that it can update the gradients. And for the learning rate, we'll just use uh, one e to the minus three. Should be should be good for this model. Um, whilst we're here, we can also set up uh, the, the we're gonna use TensorBoards just to, to log and look at the, the training curve um, over time as well as generate some images to, to put on the, the TensorBoard. Um, and so let's, let's, uh, let's import that. We're gonna get Tensor, TensorBoard set up and we can now make a, a writer for that. So we're gonna use a, I don't know why this isn't 
auto-completing, but it tends towards summary writer. And this can go into runs. And we can uh, also grab the, the latest uh, timestamp from date time. Um, so that each time we, we run it will uh, mark a unique timestamp. And I think it's double double date time. There we go. Okay. And uh, that, that should be good. Uh, let me just quickly make sure that this comes out in a, a nice readable way. Um, so we're going to just run train this isn't the best way to debug, but this is a way. Okay, we just need to make sure the Python path is set correctly. Okay, so this is gonna be a little verbose. Let's let's make this more readable. Um, so I wonder if there's a, is that ISO format? Maybe this is easier than writing a custom. Okay, yeah, we can we can go with this, this is fine. Okay, and we're just gonna use a F string to render that timestamp. Okay, so we've got our tensorboard writer, we've got our data, and we've got our model. We can now implement the train step. And we'll want to pass it an epoch index for it to reference internally. And let's also set up the, the stubs for the validation step. And we're going to have a generate step. Now the generate step will will log some image generations to our tensorboard. Just as as we're training, we can then see uh, what the the images look like uh, throughout the epochs. And now we can actually just set up the the training loop. Um, so we're gonna go uh, epoch in range uh, num epochs. And of course, we start with the train step. Um, and we pass in that epoch number and validation step and generate step. And we'll also uh, make a, a save a checkpoint um, of of the of each step uh, as after each epoch. Sorry. So let's say uh, save checkpoint. So that's the, the base training loop. Now we just need to implement each of these. Um, so for the for the training step, it's it's going to be pretty standard. So we just got to make sure that uh, the train mode is <clears throat> is uh, set on the VAE. Uh, we're going to track track a running loss uh, to to be used for logging. And now we can just start iterating over the train data loader. One thing to, to note is it's also outputting, I think it's the attributes in the second argument. So um, we need to just, but we don't care about those. So we'll just grab the, the batches. Um, so uh, firstly, we want to move the batches onto the device, whatever the device may be. And then we can uh, pass that batch through the VAE we get a loss out and then we get the reconstructions. Uh, we're just in the, the training, we only, care, we only care about the loss. So um, actually the first thing we want to do is um, zero the grad before we do any computation. Um, after we've got the loss, we can then uh, compute backwards on it and then step the, the optimizer. Um, from there, we can update uh, increment the running loss. Uh, we need to grab the item to so that it's not a tensor. And now we can uh, check whether we want to log. So um, we defined the log steps earlier. So if um, if the um, 
i modulo log steps is going to be, uh, you could check zero, but I'm going to, to do this method just so that um, it doesn't log the, the zeroth one. Um, then we're, um, if, it's, if it's not do log, then we're just going to uh, continue. And if, if it is do log, now we can um, compute what's the last uh, loss. Um, so this is the running loss divided by log steps. And we can just print this out in the, the terminal. So this is going to be an F string um, where we can uh, say the batch number and then also um, the, the last loss. And then we can also just write this uh, to the tensor board. So the, the X axis for the tensor board is going to be the epoch index um, times the length of the, the train loader. Um, actually, yeah, train loader, that should be fine. Um, times, uh, or oh, sorry, plus I, the current step, plus one. Uh, so if it's on epoch zero, uh, this term will be zero and we'll just be at step, whatever the batch uh, number is, plus one. Um, and then once we've gone through the entire train data loader, uh, that's when this term will, will kick in. And now we can just write this using add scalar. And the tag for this is going to be the, the train, lost train. And we can pass in that last loss and the, the global step. Now, after we've done that, we want to make sure that we reset the, the running loss. And that's the entire train step. For the validation, let's put in a t.nograd so that we can save some memory. Validation step. Um, firstly, you want to make sure that the model's on eval mode. And from here, let's set up this running loss pattern again. And we can do something very similar. We're going to loop over the batches uh, in the validation data loader. Uh, we want to enumerate to make sure that we're getting those indexes as well. And let's move the batch onto device. We can do a forward pass, pass that batch through the VAE, and that gets us the loss, which we can then increment onto the running loss, grabbing the, the item. Um, we can just now directly compute the, the average loss from this. And this average loss is what we can then log uh, into the tensor board. So we're just going to call this loss validation. And this is the, the average loss. And we will use the epoch index to, to log these. Uh, since this, this will just be called once per epoch. Uh, one tip actually is I'm going to swap the validation and train. Um, firstly, because then we can get a, value, uh, a validation on an untrained model. And secondly, if there's anything wrong in the validation, you don't need to train a whole epoch. Uh, before running into that error. So that's now, now we just need to do the, the generate step. Uh, again, I'm gonna put a decorator here, uh, inference mode. I'm not actually too sure what the difference between no grad and inference mode is, um, but I think inference mode works for, for this. Uh, at least we want to do inference in this step, so it makes sense to, to tag that decorator. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to sample a couple of cases out of the, the test data loader. Uh, we're not going to use all of them. And we're just going to generate the image reconstructions from those sampled images. And we're going to then log into TensorBoard um, both the, the original images and the reconstruction so that we can compare them side by side. So let's... Um, uh, import random so that we can do a random sample if I can type okay so we're gonna call random choices on the test data loader um, well actually let's do it on the the test data set itself we don't even need a test data loader 
Uh, we can just grab five samples. I'll get rid of the test data loader since we won't be using it. Uh, this will give us uh, five, five tensors into this uh, test sample. I'll call it so we don't overwrite the, uh, or let's call it test cases. So we don't overwrite the, the test variable. Um, we need to use this original grid function. Um, I'll, I need to import this from Torch Vision. Import, oh sorry, make grid. And make grid is just going to, as you can read here, it just makes a grid of, of images. So, Let's call make grid and we're going to pass in the, the test cases. Oops, I can't type test cases. And um, let's make five rows. We want to normalize, we want to scale. And then we can now write these into TensorBoard. Um, this will just make yeah a grid of images in, in TensorBoard that we can we can look at. And we can just put that original grid in there, and we'll use the epoch index uh, to to um, to index those. Um, Okay, so now let's stack these uh, test cases so that they're stacked along the, the batch axis and then we can pass them to the model and let's not forget to, to move it onto the device. So, okay, so now that we have the test case tensor, let's pass it through the VAE model and uh, we can just pass this directly through. Um, and we don't care about the, the loss, we just care about the reconstructions so let's grab that and we can also make a grid out of this let's call this the reconstruction grid and this is going to make it so, such that there's a, a grid of five um, uh, rows of, of uh, images uh, coming out the, the reconstructions and we'll pass through the, the same arguments here so five um, we want to normalize it and we want to scale and I just uh, realized that there's a bug in the training codes. This should be lost up backwards. Um, maybe we can uh, explicitly uh, do a, a cast um, from typing so, so that we uh, get the right type in. So. see if yeah so backwards is the, the right argument uh, okay going back to this um, we now have the reconstructions so we can just uh, write it uh, write a dot add image and these are the reconstructed images and let's see is there anything else yep let's also add the the epoch as the index. Okay, final thing to do is just the save checkpoint. Um, so let's grab this as an environment variable and provide a default if the environment variable doesn't exist. Uh, let's call it save directory. Um, so let's call this VAE checkpoint directory and this can just be model checkpoint um, and then what we want to do is uh, make this directory if it doesn't already exist uh, if it does exist we don't want to throw an error so exist okay equals true okay so now let's make the path um, and we can do this by joining the save directory with um, uh, the checkpoint path which we can call uh, VAE uh, let's call it checkpoint epoch and then we can pass through the, the epoch number uh, which is an argument to this function and save it as a pytorch 
file and now final thing to do is just save the model and in particular we're going to grab the state dict and call t.save on this second flag is the save path um, final thing is let's see um, okay no that, that's fine okay so let's run this and see if it if it works okay it looks like it is training and we can now go over to tensorboard and check if the results are coming okay so the results look good um looks like the the training loss is going down uh we also have the initial validation loss uh, i've i've run some uh, runs earlier on a, on a gpu to to go faster and this is what it should look like and uh, there's there's one loss here with a sigmoid and, and one with um i'm oh, sorry uh, one where we're using uh, mean squared error is the, the reconstruction loss and one where we're using binary cross entropy um and those are the green line or the green run is with bce versus uh purple being mse and we can compare some of the images but um this is what the original image samples look like um this slide is actually not working right now and here's what you can expect to see from the reconstructions so if i zoom in you can see that mse and uh, bce look very similar um, this is kind of uh, about the performance you can expect with uh, just vanilla VAE. Um, there are tricks, of course, and extensions to the VAE that uh, you can get way better reconstructions, like lifelike uh, reconstructions, um, especially using things like uh, VQ VAEs and uh, hierarchical priors. Um, but you know for this video uh, just an introduction to the VAE this gives you the foundation to the, then go on and implement those more advanced architectures okay let's talk a little bit about some training difficulties and also resources for further learning so going back to the the elbow term uh, one thing we discussed uh, in the implementation is something called posterior collapse uh, where the the decoder is starting to ignore the latent variable z uh, because it's it's not informative, i.e. maybe the encoder isn't learning a good mapping onto the latent space. Um, so what we what we can do to solve this is you can use something called scale um, annealing where you uh, put a, a, a parameter on top of the kale divergence term and you start that off small so that there's very little impact on the overall loss from the kale divergence. Uh, and then you increment that up over time, i.e., let's say, over the course of a few epochs. Um, another solution is just to use a different loss function that um, that uh, doesn't uh, have such a shortcoming. So one of those is the info VAE. There are others. Uh, and also one project that I'd like to highlight that I, I found uh, online is um, this one by Fraser. Uh, and this is a T5 VAE, i.e. Uh, he's using uh, the, the T5 encoder as the encoder to encode a sequence of, of tokens uh, from, you know, from natural language uh, onto uh, the latent space and then using the, the decoder um, section of T5 to then decode. And um, this is really interesting. This can now generate text um, and you can look in that latent space and manipulate it to decode our different sequences. And finally, just two uh, further textbooks that um, are, are really useful in, in general for, for all of machine learning, really. But uh, one is uh, Murphy's book on probabilistic machine learning. He's got a, a good chapter both in the advanced topics and in the introduction on uh, variational autoencoders and a lot of the, the extensions on top of them. And also Prince's uh, recent book Understanding Deep Learning uh, is, a, is a great resource too. So thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, um, then I'd suggest checking out the, the math video once it's out. Um, if not, then have a great day. Bye.